Does functional programming require using specific programming languages? What would it be like to try functional programming using your language of choice? My name is Wolf, and I'm only a barely functional dev, but I'm going to do my best to give insights into functional programming experience across several different languages to you. First off, the languages that I'm not going to be talking about are probably some of the ones you may have associated with functional programming already, things like Haskell, Clojure, Erlang, or other languages that are used primarily for functional programming. Instead, what I'm actually going to be focused on today is talking about languages that are mostly used for imperative programming that still support functional programming to one degree or another. And this, there's a long history of this sort of mixed paradigm between functional and imperative. For example, Fortran actually had language, a language feature to enforce pure functions way back in the day. So the first language I'm going to talk about today is JavaScript. And this is the language that I use the most, and I have by far the most functional programming experience in. It, uh, it's had first-class functions from the very beginning. Um, and if you're not familiar with that concept, uh, first-class functions is talking about treating functions as values that can be used as higher-order functions passed into other functions or returned from functions, a topic that I covered in a previous video um, on higher-order functions called Functception. In addition to that, uh, and because of that, it supports the, the common paradigms of map, filter, and reduce, the functions that are the three most common used in functional programming for data transformations. I covered that in two of my previous videos already. It also includes some operators that help support make immutable updates, and I covered those in my ES6 video that I previously posted. And there's actually more even coming to JavaScript that will help out with functional programming. There's optional chaining coming soon, which is a better way of handling nested values where at any level the value could be null, but you don't want to have to do your error handling all over the place. There's the pipeline operator, which allows you to do function composition easier. And I have another video about that, talking about function composition. I encourage you to watch. There's even proposals for new types being introduced to the language, like records and tuples. And this would give the option to represent immutable values, where the value never changes and it's enforced by the language so that you have to use those previous uh, operators that I mentioned for updating values immutably. Moving on to the next language, we have another fairly popular one, Python. Now, in Python, there were first-class functions from the start similar to JavaScript. And also, similar to JavaScript, it supported map, filter, and reduce from the very beginning. Now, there are already in Python, there's types called tuples, which um, are somewhat like what I just previously talked about that's coming for JavaScript, but they're not true immutable values because the items contained inside of them can be mutable. And so it's only a partial enforcement of immutability. Now, I don't have much personal experience with this language, but this is something I'd like to look at more in the future and make videos about in the future as well. Moving on to our next language, we have PHP, everyone's favorite, of course. Uh, First class functions were added a bit later on, not at the beginning of PHP. Um, it does include support for map, filter, and reduce. So that's a common theme you're seeing across pretty much all these languages. Uh, I used PHP very early on in my career, and I never really attempted to write functional program style in PHP. So I can't really comment on my personal experience. But this is something I also might dig into a little bit if the interest level is there still. OK, moving on to another language. This one I have a little more experience with. Uh, this is Java in this case. Um, so in the early days of Java, we started with the use of anonymous classes as a replacement for trying to handle those first class functions as a value. And then somewhat later on in Java 8, lambdas were added. And this did. It provided some more ergonomic ways of representing those anonymous functions. 
but the usefulness of this was limited because of the way that exceptions have to be handled inside of the lambda and they don't the, the basically the way that they bubble through the <laughs> through the different scopes is handled in a very awkward way and because exceptions are so prevalent in java programs which is in my opinion already being an anti-pattern for functional programming that just it makes their usefulness pretty limited and yeah i mean so there are support though for map filter and reduce by use of the stream operations on different collections um, however due to static typing and there's not really any smart type inference going on that means there's separate methods for things like map to double map to int and etc and because of the poor exception handling i talked about for lambdas it's just it's not really a great experience, honestly. I, I have tried doing functional programming in Java before, but I felt like I had to fight the language all the way. Uh, not personal recommendation of mine. However, up next we have Scala. And so Scala is a language that runs on the same virtual machine as Java, so it can be deployed in all the same environments as you would run Java, but it comes with much better type inference and less verbosity that you have to write. Uh, it includes first-class functions from the very beginning. It's kind of cool in several other ways that it treats statements as expressions. In fact, all, all things are expressions. They all produce a value, which is my preferred way of building programs. And I have a video on statements versus expressions that I encourage you to watch. It supports true immutable values with updates on them using the the you know the, the most efficient way of representing the data which i like it also includes other features that i don't have videos explaining them yet but are useful within the realm of functional programming things like lazy evaluation pattern matching and more so i very likely might go into those in the near future and i'll probably mention scala when i do um Personally, I haven't used Scala a whole lot, but when I have used it, my experience was much better and I found myself more at home with writing the functional style in Scala. So next we have C Sharp, uh, which is you know big competitor to Java and the virtual machine, just as popular. Um, first class functions are fully supported. It has this thing called link which makes writing uh, purely functional data transformations pretty ergonomic and it looks almost like you're writing queries against the data which is kind of cool in a way uh, so it supports map filter reduce all those types of things i have a small amount of personal experience writing c sharp and i found it to be generally more pleasant than java um, i would say that if your target platform is running on net though I'd recommend you look into another language called F Sharp. I'm not going to go into much detail on that, but suffice it to say, it supports functional programming a little bit nicer. So that was the last stop on your tour of functional programming in different languages for today. And so this is Wolf, your tour guide, signing off for now. Let me know in the comments below any languages you want me to include in future videos or that I briefly touched on, but you'd like to see me do a deep dive on. Please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those future videos that I intend on making. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. But if you do not like the video, there's another button for that too.